Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Abhugan Shaktivel. In this video, we're going to see how we can handle multiple environments. Because in test, in test automation space, it is very common that we have to run the same scripts in different, different environments. Most of the time, people write a lot of code, right? You, you can see a lot of switch uh, statements or your if conditions where they will check whether the environment is equal to QA, I want to use this particular URL, whether the environment is staging, I want to use this particular URL. So this always uh, you know, adds a lot of code into your framework, very hard to maintain, very hard to test because you have a lot of if conditions and switch statements. So this is uh, something that you know, I will avoid because the lesser the code you write, uh, it, it is much, much better. So what we do, we uh, here leverage the owner library and try to so solve this you know, uh, problem. Like without wasting much time, let's head to the IntelliJ. So this is a framework we have developed so far. And uh, we all know that we have three properties files. Uh, we have config.properties. We are mapping all the configurations here. And there are certain specific uh, browser stack properties. We are managing it here. And there are certain source labs properties that we are managing it here. But let's say this is uh, the environment that I'm trying to automate is, is staging or dev. I want to have different, different URLs for a different environments because the API endpoints will change uh, the, uh, and then the databases will change. So the, the, based on the environment, all these things going to change. So what, what is the right practice? Uh, we create a new file here and this file, we will name it as staging hyphen, let's say config.properties. Uh, and then I'll add this to, okay? and I can mention uh, this is staging dot web URL, right? So if you are having website URL as, uh, in in my example, I'm going to basically take uh, uh, I'm going to take this orange HRM uh, to to validate, right? So, I'm going to create a test case for this RMHRM website. So the base URL is basically this. Even though this is a broad URL, I'm assuming this is a staging URL uh, just to save some time, right? And I can mention the URL here, okay? And inside the uh, framework config, we will add new things. Let's say we'll add a string environment. For example, uh, you know, this environment uh, is, is by default because we'll have some uh, environment where we'll normally run our tests. Only in specific cases, we will run it on different environments. So by default, I'll put it as a staging. In your case, it can be dev or whatever. And uh, also, uh, let's say we want to have an overriding values. So what I can do is the string uh, web uh, URL. This is what I want. And, but where should I check for this value? I'll use key annotation here. Uh, and then I'll mention this is basically environment, right? Environment dot web URL. So what it does is, uh, so it will go and search for the environment dot web URL. So let's say the environment value staging, then it will search for staging dot web URL uh, in, in staging hyphen config dot properties. So staging dot web URL, the value is this. So this value will get assigned to this particular web URL. But for that, we also need to include the file here. So I'll just add that file again. Uh, the file name is staging hyphen config. So basically owner library will search for staging dot web URL. Uh, first via system properties, uh, then via environment variables, and then in the config dot properties, and then in the staging hyphen config dot properties. Let's say you have multiple environments, you can also add them uh, here so that it will also go and search for it. Okay, uh, let's say this is dev environment. I have dev hyphen config dot properties. I'll copy this and I'll paste it here and just name this to dev and assume the value is let's say dev hyphen something. Okay, but we are not going to use that. But in real time, this will be dev dot where you are. Okay, so yeah, so it will automatically pick the URL based upon your environment. So you are not writing any conditions, not writing anything else. Right, so it, it automatically handles this. Now we want to, uh, uh, you know, do this. Uh, let's say, let's go to the uh, driver class. And uh, here we are initializing the web and uh, we are setting this. Uh, let's say I also create one more uh, public uh, static void a load URL. And then the URL basically, uh, 
needs driver manager dot get driver dot and git and the url is basically coming from uh, git config dot web url okay yeah so now this will also fetch me the url right so i have to call this load url from somewhere but for now i'll just do the calling from here yeah. let's go to let's close all these things let's go to the uh, test we have let's try to run it and see what's happening whether uh, the website is getting launched and the url is getting loaded so basically it should create yeah it, it is actually loading the orange hr right so based upon the environment that we pass it will get automatically updated right uh, good and again this is no more uh, google title test this is orange uh hrm uh, or employee create employee test okay basically we are going to have a test case that uh, covers this creation of the employees for example uh, we go here and this is the website uh, we are going to automate this with all the good coding conventions page layer management and everything so let me first log in here and after logging in we also need to uh, let's say go to admin user management and then we need to click on users and then we need to click on this add button and then we need to select some uh, values here uh, give some employee name and then username status password and confirm password and then we need to click on save so we are basically creating a new user right so i want you guys to try creating a page layer for this and try automating a test uh, maybe in the next video i'll see how we can optimize you know create this in much better better way like how we can use composition for for page layer maintenance how we can use dynamic locator strategies uh, so that we don't create end up end up creating a lot of elements so before the next video i hope you all will try and create a page layer management for this and then also the test case so in my next video i will cover how i will approach this problem and how, how i will solve this i will see you guys in another great video until then tada bye bye from over bye